friends and welcome to part 64 of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Mass Soul Let's Play series. In today's episode, first I'll go over the new notification that says 40 million downloads campaign. So it looks like we get more free gems from here. Yeah, so it's a thousand gems. Looks, yeah, so. One, a thousand gem package. That's pretty nice. That's enough for ten packs of something. Or two structure decks if you're interested in getting one of the, in getting two of those structure decks. If there's like a certain card you need. But remember, as I saw in that last video, if you do get the structure decks, you can't dismantle cards. So only get structure decks if there's cards you actually need in there. Like, if there's a UR in there, even if you can't dismantle that, I still think it's worth it. Because then if you get said UR later on, you can always, like, dismantle your extras that aren't a part of the structure deck. So, it's pretty good either way. Um, so yeah. Um, I don't think... So, I've been doing a little bit of thinking. I don't think I'm going to open that selection pack until I have at least 10,000 gems. And even then, I think I'm going to wait until a festival to see what I can do there. And then maybe I'll open a few packs to see if I can get lucky enough to get the adventurer tokens. Because I don't really... The, or the adventurer cards, whatever they would be. The enchantress stuff, the, uh, the adventurer stuff, stuff like that. Um, yeah, because I don't need it right now. Um, the my, my ranked ladder deck doesn't need it. And, um, so, really it would be mo mainly for fun. So, I'm going to wait a little bit longer. Because it's not going away for a while. I think it's got, like, 60 days on it or something. So, yeah. Definitely weighing on that. Oh, yeah, sorry. Solo mode. So, I'll just go into solo mode right away. And, plus, I want to, like, go into solo mode right away since I didn't do it at all, um, on Monday. So I'll do more of the light swarms. Okay. Okay, so here's the last one. So this one says, with the effects of Twilight Swarm monsters, the effects of the zombie monsters, such as Plague Spirit Zombie, Sensor Graveyard will be utilized. In particular, if the effect of zombie world is applied, Twilight Sword monsters that are treated as zombies may be special by Mizuki or Zombie Master. Keep eyes on their move and formulate a plan of attack while predicting what cards your opponent has in their hand. Oh yeah, because zombie world, um, zombie world treats monsters in the graveyard as zombie types. So that's actually kind of a cool. Um, combination um, being able to like s you utilize that to spell some non zombie types out of the graveyard huh that is an interesting thing you can do um and then what I win for this is the punishment dragon icon it's an icon depicting a black dragon hailing from a world filled with light it's sharp fangs and keen claws can cut th straight through an evil force Interesting. And this is a difficulty 5 duel, so it's a little bit hard, but it shouldn't be that difficult. Ooh, fun. So I get some banish um, cards. Unfortunately, since Eat of Millions and cards like Eat of Millions and um, Gizmek Orochi banishes the stuff face down. I don't think there's any way of like being able to get them back from the ban zone. I don't think any of these guys have effects that can like get back face down banish cards. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think so. What's the whole? F okay, I I'll read the deck description. Maybe that'll tell me. Oh, because of um, Grand Maju. Deck description on Twilight Swan Focus deck that uses monsters who take advantage of banish cards. 
try your hand at using cards like Orbital Hydrolander, Gizmeka Rochi, the Serpentron, Sky Slasher, and Grand Manju Da Iza. The deck lets has a monster at every situation, allowing you to adapt to different adversities. This deck has almost like one of each copy of cards. This is almost perfect for the Limit 1 Festival. That's kind of funny. If it wasn't for the pot, the 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 two parts being at two copies, this would be the this would be a perfect limit one festival deck. How about that? <laughs> Too bad it's over now. Wish I would have seen this sooner. But yeah, like <laughs> if you were really going with uh, Grand Maju, you should really ha like. There should really be three Grand Majus in here, and then three. Probably three good monsters, three good you know, millions, and then three Gizmekarochis, and three Paw Zyres, and probably even three Paw of Extravagance. But yeah, like, like, you could probably find a way to, like, maybe even Pot of Prosperity instead of one of the other pots, and then, like, minus another one of the pots for something else, and then it would be the perfect um, Limit 1 Festival deck. Or maybe not the perfect, but like it would be an interesting one. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of cool. Not doesn't seem very competitive because like, um, of course, like an almost Highlander deck, like it's probably not going to be good. Um. But it it, it looks fun at least. Yeah, I'll scroll through all the cards afterwards. So you can get a better look at each one. And then you can feel free to pause if you need to. The cool thing about this guy is that you can, like, um, special summon him during your opponent's turn as well. So that's kind of cool. But I don't think I'm going to special summon him at, unless I absolutely need to. I might as well do it now, actually. Yeah, I'm going to do it now. Because now, if I need to, I can always spell summon during my turn as well. If there's a way I can get rid of him. Like, for a link summon, and then I... See, I wouldn't have been able to if I would have waited. Because he can only be spell summon once per turn. Yeah, you only get to use one of his effects per turn. And... Or I can, like, always, um, destroy, uh, face a monster on the field. Is this already game? I don't know. I don't think so yet. I'm gonna... Oh, uh, you know, okay, now it's definitely not game because... I did that. I think I'm just gonna do Celestia. Oh, it has to be using a light swan. I forgot. Whatever. And I can go into Name of Phoenix, but I'm not going to. Oh, well, at least, at least I still get the... And then I might as well not do anything else because... Oh, you know what? I should have, um... I, I should have went to Nightmare Phoenix even if I didn't need to. It's fine. I think this is game here. I could have probably got game one turn sooner, but it's okay. This is pretty fun. Hopefully I can still um know some Grand Maju. I forgot. Okay, good, I can. Yeah, I'm just gonna activate this effect here. It doesn't matter. Just to destroy this guy. And then this should be game right here. 
Oh man, 9600. That only took me two turns. I could have... Technically two of my turns, yeah. So I, I could have probably won in one turn if I hadn't played the one day of peace, maybe. But yeah, that's kind of cool. That's kind of the cool thing about Grand Maju. I got lucky enough to get him in my opening hand. So that was very nice. That's one of the cool things about Grand Maju. He can get... He can make for some pretty quick games. Um, so I'll go ahead and go through this again using my own deck. My own... um. Oh, wait, yeah, this is how you do it. So, for clearing this one, use my own deck. Um, of course, you can feel free and pause to read the description if you'd like. I already read it, so I'm not going to read it again. Um, oh, yeah, before I do this, I'll go through each of the cards here in the loner. So, here are the cards... At least you saw kind of like how like how cool an a, a Grand Maju style deck can be. Um, of course, if you really want it to be competitive, you really want to play Grand Maju at three, and then like the Gizmek Orochi at three, and the Eater Millions at three. They're like some of the best banished cards, and probably even like Pav Zaya's at three too. But like. Yeah, you can definitely combine Grand Maju with different stuff. One of the most popular um, decks that Grand Maju likes to be combined with is Dangerous, so that you can, like, um, to, like, aid in another way of being able to draw cards. But, like, there's certainly other archetypes. Like, you could mix it with the Twilight Swans. I mean, since Twilight Swans... Um can also ban stuff as well. Too bad this is like all face up banish cards. But you could all probably also combine a Grand Maju deck with Twilight with um Metaphys as well. Yeah, see like I don't know how well like um the the, the two archetypes actually match because this one requires you to have um, ba specifically banished Lightswood monsters um, to spell summon himself. And if, like, they're face down, like, they don't count. They don't count. They have to be face up in order to count. So, yeah, I don't know how well these two archetypes mesh, but... I mean, I guess you could try it. And then, like, feel free to let me know how it goes but of course you want to try to like um hit a little bit harder with on the um grand maju package don't just like play one of each of the cards like that's not how you do it anyway so here's my paleozoic frog deck to be reminded i saw another person's deck but i think what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna wait until I can get the adventure tokens. Another way I could do it is to play is to mix it with the L Lich. So like I could do it like this. Um L Lich It's basically called L Lich Frogs. I have all, all the L Lich stuff already, so I could combine it with L Lich. Um, so here's wh how it would look like if I could probably just get rid of the dangerous stuff and just like combine with Eldritch. Um, Eldrix of, see like, um, yeah, I'll probably just remove all the dangerous stuff. So here's how it would look like if you can were to combine with Eldritch. Um... I mean, it's hard to say what I should get rid of. 
I think the Paleozoic stuff is already good. I mean, maybe like, maybe less Morella. Don't really need Morella. I could probably also get rid of that. Get, wait, no, not the Max C. Not definitely not the Max C. I like I like Max C. But the Jackalope. I definitely want three of the Elixir. And then I probably want... See, I can only have one of the Conquistadors, but that's okay. And then I can still have three of these. Um... Hmm. Maybe I could get rid of the Lost Win. Oh, actually, like... Hmm. And then maybe the torrential, get rid of that. Something like that. I'm not sure if that's the best way to I mean maybe even like get rid of like the lightning storm. I could probably simply I mean technically what I can also do is I can make it. But you know what? I'll get rid of the lightning storm to get to put in the torrential. Technically, another thing I can do is I can get rid of the call by the graves, probably. Hmm. I mean, do I really need carved demise? Probably. I'll probably keep that. So I could also get rid of the call by the grave to put in like another torrential, and either either a fury, or simply something like imperial order, probably. Or even like Gavani's emptiness, but I think I'll do Imperial Order. Anything else I can do? I think this is pretty good right here. See, like, some like this, like, with, like, combining. Elich with um frogs. That's basically what it could look like. And then the um golden land monsters count as no monsters, so I can always use those for Link Spider. I could probably also put in the train thing, like get rid of something to put in the train. Um maybe get rid of her area and uh Get rid of the Marinsa's colon enemy. To put in that. To put in the train cards. Forget what they're called. Dang. Um. Can I do related stuff? Related cards. Dang it. I can't. What? Related cards. Seriously? Yeah. I'll do Lieb. No one of the cards are called Lieb. It, related cards, it's blank. Okay, you know what? Whatever. I know it's a rank 10. It's an it's an exceed. Yeah, actually it'd probably be easier just to do it like this. Here it is. 
Super Dreadnought Rail Con and Gustav Max. That's what it's called. And guys, this looks pretty good right here. Yeah. I'll just have one of that one. So yeah, probably something like this is fine. I'll save. So yeah, here's here's an idea of like combining Eldritch with Frogs. This is a of 60 card variant um version of that. It seems like it should be pretty good. Um, since Outlitch is a pretty strong control deck, like, um, I think it would make, um, it should make Frogs a little bit better on the rank ladder if you do it like that. Of course, there's other things you can do, like add Dogmatica Punishment, add in, like, that Dogmatica engine. That should be pretty good, too. But, of course, I don't have the Dogmatic Engine. I don't feel like making it right now, so. that This is pretty lucky. I got the Grass Looks Green right away. And, of course, the Eldritch um, pairing isn't too bad in Grass Looks Greener deck. Because there's a lot of um, Graveyard cards in Eldritch, too. So, like, all of these are, can be activated from my Graveyard. So, that's pretty cool. And I have the Ron and Tonin play right away, which isn't bad. So I might as well do that. It doesn't really matter which card I banish. Actually, maybe it... I mean, it really doesn't matter since I'm no longer playing the Mons as Colon Enemy. I mean, so I could technically go into either Totally Awesome or Predator Plant, but I think I'm going to go into, yeah, the Totally Awesome. Yeah. I'll go ahead and go into Totally Awesome. I think I value the Negate more than the Quick Effect Destruction. Not that the Quick Effect Destruction is bad. So now I might as well activate these. So this allows me to look for one of these cards. So I'll go for Conquistador, I guess. And then I also have the Eldritch, which is kind of cool. So I'll go for Elix of White Destiny, though. So that allows me to go for another Golden Lands card. Must have banished one of them. Wait, what? I thought I played. Oh, it, oh, it's already in my graveyard. That's why. So I'll go for this one. And I think I'm going to go for the Eldritch play. Why I special summon it. So I'll go ahead and send that to the graveyard. And now special summon the Eldritch the Golden Lord in defense in case there's a lightning storm. I can always negate that, but like there might be other things too. Um so I'll set the golden land forever. At worst, if I can't negate a lightning storm, um I get to keep Well, I would be able to keep this guy anyway, since it can't be stored by card effects. That's kinda cool. That when he be special summoned by his own effect, he gets to not be destroyed by um, card effects. So yeah. I'll end. So now I can um, banish uh, Kiro to get myself um, one of the Elixir cards. I might as well do Scarlet Sanguine since that's a Normal trap. Okay, and then I can do the totally awesome. I'll get I'll, I'll ditch the run. So I can special summon the swap. Kind of wish I could special summon a dupe, but that's okay. So that allows me to send the Ronin from my deck to my grave. Yeah, all the 
dupe I the banish wait what one oh and then the third dupe is equipped to my um totally awesome so now I can I don't think I'm gonna do anything about that okay but now what shuffle that monster into a deck wow I am not gonna allow that so I'll go ahead and do the conquistador and I can chain the Canadia engrave so that's another cool thing if, is that this like the El elixir traps are still traps so they can um trigger the paleozoics as well it's not bad synergy at all And now I can activate this guy to, um, hmm. I could do the elixir to trigger my other, but I already have that elixir, so I'm going to do the El the black awakening in instead, since I'll be a able to activate it now, since it's coming to my turn. So unfortunately, I can't do totally awesome because I, but that's okay because I'll just do swap fog. Oh, this is also another cool about cool thing about swap fog is I can actually put the conquistador back in my hand and then reset it because it doesn't have the same the same effect as the paleozoics where it's like banished whenever it's. When it, if it leaves a field. They wouldn't be as good if they had that effect though. But I'll still just do the swap fog. To send this swap fog to my graveyard. And then I'll go ahead and go into. Hmm. I can go into Opabinia. But what would that do? I don't. I think I'm just going to go into Verde Anaconda now. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I need to go into Link Spider first. Oh, but I can use the Conquistador to do it. So I'll use the Conquistador. Hmm. And then I'll go ahead and... Go into um, Verde Anaconda now. This isn't game yet, so what I'll do is um, I'll use the other Eldritch. Send the Eldritch of Black Awakening. And then special summon it. Okay, and then this is game. Oh, and I think it's also a lot easier to have fast games when you combine it with the uh, El Lich. So that's another cool thing. Because the El Lich are the Eldritch monsters are so powerful and they can also go into that little train thing and the train thing can base and then Lieb can basically attack with like 6,000 attack or like maybe t into two monsters like either way for like an OTK some kind of OTK right there too um okay so I'll go for the two on the main path first. Okay, so here's... Okay, and then once again, you can feel free to pause if you want to read the little description. I already read it when I was doing the loner deck, but you can feel free to pause if you want a refresher of it. Okay, now that I complete it... Um... Do you want... Should I show you the opponent's deck? I'm not sure if... You'd rather be surprised. 
Um, yeah. Um, since since I'm going to be like um putting a ch putting up chapters. Um, those who don't want to be um spoiled can always feel free to skip the chapter. Um. But I'll go ahead and show off the opponent's deck since I went through it. Um, so here's what the opponent's deck will look like. And I'll go through each one at a time. And then the description of the opponent's deck is... It's a deck that teaches the basics of light swarms. Although you have to send um, cards to the graveyard when you use various effects and during end phase when you play this deck it can also help you build for powerful protection by putting shine counters in realm of light and or light sword sanctuary however realm of light and light sword sanctuary i don't think are very popular light sword cards um, I don't think Realm of Light is a very popular field spell because it really only boosts attack. Light Sword Sanctuary is a little bit better because it actually helps you to um, become Light Sword monsters. But there's already a lot. But but Lumina already basically does that in a better way since instead of just like adding them to the hand, she um, special summons Light Swords from the graveyard. So she's basically a better effect of that. Without needing to like have like shine counters for that. Without needing to like have like setup. Actually, this doesn't really need setup either, but I would say she's still better. Just because she can special summon them instead. And then so here's what the deck looks like. Again, I don't think Ryko, like so you could probably get rid of one of the flip effects ten in a third copy of Lumina, just because she's so good. And when she can get out, like, another copy of herself from the graveyard, you can, like, um, you can use that copy, that new copy, to, like, activate her effect again, as long as you have another card in your hand. And another Light Sworn in the graveyard, of course. But, like, how, basically what you can do to ensure that is basically send a uh, Light Sworn monster the first time so you can be sure you have another light swan when you're special summoning out that second copy of Lumina. Um, and of course, Wolf, you probably, you might want to play three Wolves. I would say you definitely want to play three Radians in a light swan deck. Um, but I think two Felis and two Wolves are okay. And then Judgment Dragon. You might want to play Thea the Judgment Dragon. I'm not sure. You definitely want to play Thea the Solar Recharge Ob since it's so good. And you definitely want to play three Charger Light Brigade in a Light Sworn deck. This isn't very good. I don't really see this played in a Light Sworn deck. Um, I mean, the cool th I mean, you do get to equip it, but like, it just gives it a little bit extra attack another good card that you could play in lights one deck is um is uh i'm honest and honest is at three in this game so that's not not bad and then of course there's a ram of light the lights one sanctuary and then you probably want to play three of this card as well Especially since you can play this with Trap Trick to like kind of like um ensure that it gets to the top of the deck as quickly as possible. So then you can pretty much make sure you're like staying into the graveyard. I think you can no this no it has to be by a Light Swan Monster effect specifically. So you can't just like mill it using Foolish Bear of Goods. Um and I don't think this card is very good. It's kind of cool though. Glory Solution. This one seems fine. Light Swarm Barrier. Probably not. Probably don't need to. Also, another pretty good card you could probably use in, like, any Light Swarm deck. Not just a Twilight Swarm deck. Just because you're saying so many cards in the graveyard. Um, you could probably do Snow. And then, like, all the cards you don't need in the graveyard. 
um or that have been like used up you can always like banish off of snow so you can get like basically a quick effect book of moon you could probably also play a 60 card um light swan variant and then like do like grass or screener kind of like with the frogs but like with the kind of like something like this but like light swans instead and then also not utilizing the paleozoics yeah so yeah there's that and then the next one here on the main path the last hole is going to be this one and then here's what i get for winning this one so i think this one is going up against the twilight swans now so just a basic twilight swan deck and then here's what i get for winning so simply just tribute dock with with small attack to um destroy all special monsters so that's pretty cool it destroys both your own and your opponents though so you want to be a little bit careful but if you're playing like something like a true draco with like small monsters but there's certainly better things you can do than like play that though um anyway let's go ahead and play now So of course I'm um, still using the Eldritch with the Paleozoic Frogs, and this seems to be to help with getting quicker games. So that's nice. I'm just trying to show off how how it would look um, combining. Um, frogs with the Eldritch. And it seems to be working pretty well. I can see why some people like to do that. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do the Dew Frog. I think I'll set, go ahead and set it. And also set my two Eldritch of White Destiny. Unfortunately, it needs to be either for my Hand of Graveyard. That's okay though. So I can't really activate these elixirs right, right now. There's the glorious illusion. Oh, so my opponent's still playing light swans, or are they mixing? Got two wolves. Dang. Got two wolves off of that mill. Oh yeah, here's a burn one, which... This one isn't good. She doesn't even have a mill effect. Okay. So now I can go ahead and go into... Totally... Mm, yeah, totally awesome. Seems fine. I can't destroy the Dragoneth, but at least I can go after the, hmm, kind of want to destroy the Genus just to do a lot of damage, yeah. And now I can go and do the Zeus. I think I will. I think I will do Zeus because he's pretty much going to... Unfortunately, it pretty much gets rid of my... My, my, my negate with Toadly, but... I think this is probably the smart thing to do. So I'll go ahead and do this. So get rid of these two. Cool. So now it gets rid of all the cars on his field as well. 
and then I'll go ahead and do the elixir which allows me to set the I think I'll go with the Hakuiro. I mean I could do the Ronin but I don't really have another play so I'm just gonna go ahead and end and I have another um, send with with the Zeus as well, so that's nice. Um, I guess I hmm, think I have to do it. Oh, I still get the totally awesome effect. That's awesome. I wasn't sure. So that's a nice thing to know. So even if he's equipped as um, Exigmentary, you still get the totally awesome effect. Okay, so I'll go ahead and set the... I don't have any Paleozoic engraved. So it doesn't really matter. So I'll just use the Elixir. Hmm. Okay, so this one. So now I can go ahead and do the Ronin effect. Banish the do special summon it. And now go ahead and this says for the rest of this turn. So that's another pretty awesome thing. So I can just wait to activate th this one. So I'm going to go ahead and go into totally awesome. Okay, and then I'll activate the elixir. I'll go ahead and I think I can still dang it I can't it's so close to game oh well I have two negates now so that's pretty nice so now I can go and I'll go ahead and go into an end phase Yes. So I'll detach the Ronin to special summon dupe. There's another judgment. But now if he tries activating, I can only just negate that with the Tolly. I'll send off the dupe. And I get the Judgment Dragon now. Oh, it misses timing, so I don't get set it to my field. Hmm. Whatever. I'll go ahead and do the Hakuiro. Yeah, and I'll banish a card. Um... I think I'll banish one of the lights ones so that no longer has four different names. It doesn't matter, so I'm not going to. I'm just going to go ahead and go into battle now. There we go. Okay, so there's another one. And then I'll go through the pawn stack here. Let's see. I think th it was simply another light swan deck. Yeah. This time you okay, yeah, it was mixing. It was mixing a little bit. Um it says a deck that teaches the basics of Twilight Swans 
Continuing from the basic strategies of light swarms, you can make further use of the cards that have been sent from your deck to a graveyard with twilight swarm effects that activate at a different timing. Clear the field with judgment dragon, then add cards that have been sent to a graveyard being shut back to your deck with punch or dragon. And again, this time the opponent's only using one Lumina. I think you always want to use three Lumina. So anyway, here's what the deck looks like. Um, yeah, I think three Lumina is pretty much a given. Um, maybe even three, like two or three of this Lumina as well. I, I'm not exactly sure. It depends on like how much you're like really banishing your stuff. Two Lila is probably pretty good because she can destroy back row. But you probably don't want to play three because like you might not like run into like. Because it, in case like there's no back row on your opponent's side of the field. You don't really want to waste it. Maybe even just like one punishment and three judgment might be a way to do it. Because I think punishment is a little bit more. Is a little bit more situational. And of course two solar recharge and two charge of light brigade. I would say is how you want to play that. Um, Twilight Trin Dragons. Helps you basically get the other. Um... It can like help get like recur either one, so maybe like three of that would also not be too bad. And then Twilight Cloth, I don't know. Yet yeah, one Twilight Cloth might be okay, cause it's not that great. Um, and then there's the extra deck. Of course, the extra deck only contains eight right now. So anyway, so there's what that deck looks like. Definitely not the most optimized way to play Twilight Swans or Light Swans or a combination of both, but um, it does kind of give an idea of like a good start for like the deck. Okay, so then here's a uh, uh, difficulty for alternate path duel, and then for this one, I simply get two Legacy Pack tickets. What would your legacy be? Okay. And I could always use more of those. That's very nice. And then remember, you can always um just pause to read the description if you want a little bit of a reminder. So anyway, here we go with my Eldritch Frog stack. Seems pretty good so far. Yeah, there's a lot of things you can combine with frogs, though. Not just the Eldritch or the Dangers. There's quite a few things. And I, and I might even, like, show off, like, how I can combine with the Adventure Tokens later on. But, I don't know. Um, I'll have to think about that. I don't want to just, like, waste gems. But, since the Adventurers are a little bit more versatile... I might be willing to maybe like maybe if I see like a really good deck suddenly comes in con to contention with the adventure tokens a really good ladder deck maybe then like that will help me say like oh yeah maybe it's worth it okay so I can't really do much so I'll just return the swap fog to my hand and now I can set these So that's not bad. And then I'll end. Not too bad. And of course, like, not not too bad since I wasn't really able to get a good... I wasn't really able to go into battle anyway. So, okay, now what I can do is I can do the Elixir. To special summon the Elich. See, if I would have, like, gone the Elixir instead of that 
the the Scarlet Swing Sanguine instead of that other one, last all, I would have been able to win a ton earlier. But that's okay. Um, that's fine. Okay, well, I'm definitely not going to activate Carved Demise. Okay, and now I'll banish a card. I'll go ahead and banish the monster, Light Raid Midor. Okay. And now I can, what can I do? Oh, Elixir. I'll go ahead and do Swap Frog. And yes, I'll activate his effect to send off dupe, I guess. And then now I can get out my Ronin. So now I can special summon out Ronin. I mean, totally awesome. So now I can get out the voting anaconda. Actually, I should go into Link Spider first using this one. And now I can go into voting anaconda using him and the Link Spider. Right there, it's fine. And now, before I hmm. think, I'm actually going to do the elixir first. Um, guess I'll set the conquistador. Okay, so now I'll go for the Eldritch. I guess I'll send off the Conquistador. Okay, so I could go into Axis Code, but... I'll just activate the Predator Plant. Send that. Special Summon. Put that there. And then I'll go ahead and Um, I'll destroy the elixir, and then destroy Lumina, and now I can go into battle, and this is already game. That's okay, I'll just negate it. Dang it. I uh, might as well set it. Hmm. And now it's not game. Dang it. Well, this is definitely going to be last all here. Okay, so now I can go and 
activate the elixir to set the golden land forever that seems sound seems good so I still have a negate so I'll go ahead and activate the conquistador um I think I'll set elixir of scarlet sanguine Um, not going to do anything just yet. I think I'm just going to do the Golden Land Forever here. To tribute that, to negate the Radiant and destroy it. Cool. Now I, I can do this. I'm not going to mess. Cool. That's not bad. Okay. Activate the swap. To send, it really doesn't matter. I guess I'll just send a dupe. So now I can special summon the Dasher or the Destroyer Finx Enforcer. And then I'll just battle. Yep, and there we go. So yeah, it seems fun with the Eldritch. That's definitely one way, one direction you can go with the fog deck. And ju that that just to give you one idea um, for how you can combine it with Eldritch. You can of course do a 40 card variant with Eldritch as well. But I still just want to go with 60 cards myself. I want I still want to keep that up. Anyway, um so I hope you enjoyed those few duels. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. I'm gonna show off the the poem sack for this last one. Here it is, enforces of justice. See, I still have quite a few um, gates to get through too. So here's what I just did. So here's the poem sack here. Um, I, it's called a shining and just heart. A deck that combines light rays and light swans. Depending on the number of light monsters you have in a graveyard and banish, light ray monsters m may be special summoned and gain a range of effects. The light swans will carry most of the duel, but once they've set up the right conditions for the light rays, you can special summon light ray monsters to finish off your opponent. So here's the cards. Again, I think three luminas. You could probably simply just get rid of a Vico. To put an alumna if you were like making changes to this deck, for example. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna go over like how to play a full light swan deck. This one seems a bit better because at least they're playing um, three Raidens, which is a pretty good amount. And reinforcement, oh yeah, and reinforcement of the army is pretty good for helping to get out to search for your Raidens. So yeah, I, I do agree with that. And it also searches for the... Well, no, it doesn't search for the light rays, but it does... But, like, of course, Raiden is, like, one of your most important lights ones. And then three solar recharge. Okay, good. The, this one's actually playing three. So this one is, already, is, is looking a lot better than those other two. Um... And of course, it's also playing 15 cards, so that's pretty good. Oh yeah, it's sold. I didn't even think about that. That's another way for you to like search for like a Radiant or any of the Light Rays in here. But it does call for two Warriors, so it might be a little bit hard getting it out. It has a pretty good um, effect since it searches for any of your Warriors instead of just your like lower level ones, like the Reinforcement of the Army. 
So anyway, I don't, I unfortunately don't have time for uh, uh, any legacy pack opening any of those. But I do hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.